Whether it's the canopy of branches and leaves starving the sunlight, the gnarly and twisted forms of trees tricking the mind, or its seemingly endless maze of disorientating passages, forests have always been creepy location for visitors. I'm Leaky, and today I'm going to tell you about the real life ghost stories of Epping Forest, a spirit that is said to drag cars in neutral up a hill, satanic worship including human sacrifice, a little girl's spirit photographed on a swing, and a bloody ghost who runs out in front of cars forcing them to crash. Epping Forest is known as the People's Forest, but as you're about to find out, it actually belongs to the dead. Epping Forest, in Essex, has a rich history that dates right back to the Iron Age and has been used as a hunting ground for the majority of those years. The name wasn't recorded until the 17th century. Before that, it was part of the Waltham Forest, and the ancient forest timbers have been used since the Anglo-Saxon period to build an array of buildings in the area. There are still 55,000 ancient trees still growing in this forest, which means it has more ancient trees than anywhere else in England. It was once described as the Arcadia of the Artisan of the East End by author Mark Gorman and was owned by the royal family for centuries. In fact, Henry VIII had a hunting lodge built in the forest. In 1878, its royal status was given up through the Epping Forest Act thanks to the efforts of the hard-working people of the East End who raised cattle and bred rabbits for generations on the land. In 1882, Queen Victoria claimed it the People's Forest, severing its last connections to the monarchy. The forest has seen a lot of turmoil in its time, with people travelling from London to use it as a safe haven from the plague that spread like wildfire through London in the 1660s, and later for the World War II bombings known as the Blitz. The first ghost I want to talk about is that of a little girl who is said to haunt the King's Oak pub located on the edge of the forest. Several visitors to the establishment have claimed to have seen a small girl at the corner of their eye. When glancing over, she vanishes. This girl is believed to be the daughter of a former landlord who tragically lost her life in a fire at the King's Oak. Others say that the girl actually drowned in a nearby pond and is still tethered at the place she called her home in life. While the history of the girl is obscure, over the years people have inadvertently snapped photographs of the phantom girl. This includes one that shows a luminescent form playing on a swing outside. Of course, this could be a real person on the swing, but according to the one who took the photograph, all they saw was the swing moving on its own. It's this photograph that really interests me, as on closer inspection, you can see the child has different shaped lips and brow as the other family members in the picture. This means it's unlikely to be some kind of reflection or a superimposed photograph. Maybe this little girl just really wanted some wedding cake, a volivant, and a boogie to gangdam style. People have also reported that they have been pushed or touched by an invisible force. Could this be the playful spirit of the landlord's daughter who has claimed the King's Oak as her playground? The world's most famous highwayman, Dick Turpin, is said to still stalk unwitting victims from the shadows of the forest. John Palmer, known by his alias Dick Turpin, was born in Hempstead in 1705 and got involved in the bloodthirsty Essex Gang, also known as the Gregory Gang, named after its leader Samuel Gregory. It is also believed that he got his wife to open a butcher shop, which he used to dispose of and sell the deers stolen from the royal forest by the gang. After the law caught up with them and several members were arrested and hung for their crimes, Turpin left the gang to fend for himself. Like pirates, highwaymen have been romanticised by history, but in reality, they were ruthless murderers and serial thieves. And when I say serial thieves, I don't mean that they stole boxes of Fruit Loops from the supermarket. He would often burgle farmhouses in the Epping area and torture the female occupants who refused to cooperate. Dick by name, dick by nature. Turpin chose the vast and isolated Epping Forest to target wealthy travellers to rob at gunpoint, shouting his famous catchphrase, Stand and Deliver. Turpin's favourite location as a base of operations in the forest was the Loughton Camp, where it is believed he killed at least one man. Dick Turpin met his end on the 7th of April 1739 and was hung in Navesmere, York. The very next morning, his body was buried at St George's Church. 
On the Tuesday following the burial, however, the corpse was stolen by body snatchers so that it could be sold to doctors wishing to expand their knowledge of anatomy. How poetically ironic that a man who profited from a life of robbery was eventually stolen himself to be sold to the highest bidder. Unfortunately for the robbers, a mob caught up with them and the corpse. Turpin's body was reburied at St George's. It is believed that Dick Turpin's spirit still haunts the overgrown and twisted trees of the Loughton camp. The spirits of men dressed in period clothing have been reported for many years holding old-fashioned pistols or blades. Dark shadows have also followed those walking down the paths at night, as well as giving people the unshakable feeling of being watched. A phantom carriage is often heard but never seen. Could this be the echo of a terrified party trying to escape the musket of a highwayman? Maybe as a punishment for his sins, Dick Turpin is forced to stalk the ancient forest for eternity. Looking for victims, he'll never be able to terrorise. Well, physically anyway. Hangman's Hill, located at High Beach, is said to be one of the most haunted locations in Epping Forest. The name itself is enough to make you turn back the other way. At the top of the hill is the tree that gives the location its name, the place where an executioner would take criminals to hang them for their crimes. There is an infamous spot on the hill where cars parked in neutral are pulled uphill, this phenomenon has been practiced and proved for years and is believed by some to be the spirit of the hangman trying to drag its next victim up to the tree. While that sounds really cool and ominous, in reality the cars being dragged uphill is just an optical illusion known as a gravity hill. The car is actually rolling downhill but the surrounding landscape makes it look like the hill is going up. It's just trippy. With that being said, hangman's hill has its fair share of unexplained activity. Some have claimed that they have seen a spectral form dragging a reluctant criminal who is said to be screaming and pleading behind him towards the tree, just like my mother taking a seven-year-old me to the dentist. Blood-curdling screams are also heard in the area, which has caused concerned visitors to call the police on occasion. Are these the screams of the terrified criminals in their final moments, or could they belong to other lost souls caught in a loop of turmoil in the afterlife? Deep within Epping Forest is a pond that is said to draw in people like a voice in the darkness, urging them to unalive themselves within its murky waters. The legend claims that 300 years ago, the pond was the scene of a tragic, self-inflicted end of two young lovers. While they loved each other deeply, their conflicting backgrounds meant that their families wouldn't let them be together. In life anyway. The classic Romeo and Juliet dilemma. The two decided that they would take their lives at their favourite meeting spot, a pond within Epping Forest. After a long kiss, they held hands and waded into the water, and never resurfaced. It is said that the pond turned thick and black with sludge soon after, with the vegetation and wildlife beginning to drop down dead on its banks. It also has been noticed that birds are never heard, squirrels and deer refuse to stay in the vicinity, and no one enjoys camping there. Mm, but that final point could be down to people not being a fan of squatting in the woods and trying to eat half-cooked sausages from a disposable barbecue. Or is that just me? Now there have been a lot of incidents that have happened at this pond, ranging from the 1800s to modern times, but out of respect, I'm not going to go into those. Also, I think it's important to state that this video is about folklore and ghost stories, and I'm in no way claiming that this pond made people do what they did. The issue is far deeper than that and goes beyond superstition. The pond isn't marked on any official map. Interestingly, in 1959, a competition was held by the Essex Countryside magazine in an attempt to find out where the lost pond was. While people took up the gauntlet, only one woman returned and claimed that she had discovered the location. When the magazine people asked her where it was, however, she told them that she would never tell them the location because the pond was a dark and evil place with an atmosphere unpleasant beyond description. I have a feeling that she might have discovered this pond in a public bathroom. I feel like this could be like that one kid in school who came to know the answer to everything, but when you ask them, they'd say, don't you know, I know the answer, but I don't feel like saying it right now. Nah, I'm not saying, but I know the answer. Along the road running through Epping Forest is the Wake Arms Roundabout, where several people have claimed to have seen a phantom horseman galloping down the road. A modern take on the headless horseman legend seen on the Wake Arms Roundabout is a headless biker who has been seen speeding down the road before vanishing into thin air. 
Another ghost is said to run out in front of cars, but vanishes as they are about to be hit. This is believed to be the spirit of an unfortunate person who failed to cross the busy road many years ago. More chillingly, there is another story of a bloody looking figure running towards cars from the tree line in order to get drivers to swerve so that they can be joined in the afterlife on the roundabout. Some have speculated that this may be the spirit of a man who tragically lost his life on the road but doesn't realise he's dead, running to cars in a panic, desperate for help. Over the years many bodies have been discovered in Epping Forest. Its incredible size made it the perfect hiding place for murderers to hide their dirty deeds. In fact, since the 1960s, over a dozen murder victims have been discovered. One woman was even found in her car with a crossbow arrow through the head. It is also rumoured that witchcraft has been practised in the forest throughout the centuries for both good and bad purposes. It has also been claimed that satanic rituals have been carried out at the Church of Innocence at High Beach, such as the case of alleged satanic human sacrifices in 1991, which could never be proven in court. With a location that has been occupied by humans since the Iron Age, it's no surprise that there have been countless tragedies, bloodshed and violence in its past. If anywhere should be haunted, it will be Epping Forest. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more like it, such as the real story behind the nun and the woman in black, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and then ring the notification bell. It really, really, really helps me out. And as always, sleep well, friends.